Microphone. Like this? Okay. Oh. Um, you can understand me now? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm Hanno Böck. I work as a freelance journalist. Uh, you can read my articles off on Google in the German, or I write a bulletproof TLS newsletter if you're interested in everything that's about TLS and from time to time on LWN. And uh, the other thing I do is that I run the Fuzzing Project, which is an effort I started around one and a half years ago um, to where I found out, okay, there's a lot of free software out there that if you run a fuzzing tool on it, you can easily find, find bugs and security vulnerabilities. And yeah, I want to clean that up and yeah, find ways to make free software more secure. Uh, and this effort is now supported by the Linux Foundation's core infrastructure initiative. So yeah, I'm getting paid for doing this. Um, and yeah, the, but the project I want to tell you about today is not about fuzzing, but it's something which is kind of related. So um, the typical security vulnerabilities we have today in C code, like buffer overflows, memory corruption, out of bounds reads, use after free errors, um, they are we they can, they all boil down to a core issue that C doesn't have any intelligence about the memory it uses. You have some kind of buffer, and then you're accessing the buffer uh, for too many bytes or on the wrong index. Um, yeah, then you have a problem. You have a bug, and it may very well be a security vulnerability. Um, now, uh, the question is: um, so if your if your code does this, if your code reads some invalid memory, that is. Uh, by the C standard called undefined behavior, which means your compiler can do whatever it wants. You have no guarantee that your code will have any kind of reliable behavior. So we could say, okay, if the compiler can decide uh, to do whatever it wants in these cases, couldn't the compiler say, okay, let's, let's play it safe, and if there's an access to invalid memory, just terminate the application and throw an error. Um, and there have been different attempts to do this. Uh, so there's Wallgrind, which probably most of you know. Um, it doesn't terminate the application, but it will detect some of these invalid memory access errors. Uh, there's a project called Softbound CETS, which um, tries to do this in a very strong sense. The problem with it is that it's not really <coughs> practical. So. Uh, you can compile a Hello World tool with it, but as soon as you try to compile some real software with it, uh, you end up finding out that it doesn't work. And then there's, since a few years, uh, something called Address Sanitizer, uh, which is a compiler feature and which is uh, what I'm going to talk about in more detail. Um, so Address Sanitizer is uh, implemented as a flag in GCC and CLang. So you probably all already have it on your machines. It's just uh, yeah, an additional compiler flag. Um, it has a, let's say, acceptable overhead. Your application gets 50 to 100% slower. So this is originally designed as a debugging tool. This is not something which was originally supposed to be run for, for production use, but to test your software. Um, and the nice thing is it actually works. Like It's not like a tool where, OK, it's nice, but if you try to compile a real application, then it will break. But most applications, you can compile with it, and you can run with it. Um, so um, this is how it looks <laughs> like if you compile an application with address sanitizer and something, something bad happens, then you get <laughs> one of these nice uh, stack traces. So, uh, you get a pretty detailed idea of what's going on. It says here it's a write of size 4 at some address, and you get the lines in the code where it happened, and you get a full stack trace where it happens, and you also get an idea of where this memory was probably allocated, uh, uh, why. So you get a pretty good idea what your bug might be. So uh, that's a real-world example from a bug in libbsd 
that I reported just a week ago, um, yeah, was a classical bar overflow. Um, yeah, um, but now uh, at some point I asked, so, uh, okay, this is a nice feature. Would it actually be possible to compile your whole system with Apple Sanitizer? Um, because, like, yeah, for one, it probably mean that we would find a lot of bugs just by trying that. And it might be an option if you want to have a very secure system that you can kind of accept the overhead that address sanitizer means uh, to run your system. Um, and I tried this with Gentoo, um, but Gentoo really here is just the kind of the tool I'm using. You can do this with any distribution. I mean, Gentoo is nice because it's already designed to be self-compiled, thereby just adding another compiler flag. Uh, so you might think, okay, it's just a compiler flag, let's add it and recompile everything. But it, it's actually not that easy, unfortunately. So um, some of the problems are, okay, if you try to compile glibc with address sanitizer, you run into a problem because address sanitizer is actually replacing some of the glibc functions to, to intercept memory allocations and know what's going on and there you get kind of recursion problems. You also cannot easily compile GCC. It's both possible to compile glibc and GCC with address sanitizer, but it's not, it doesn't work out of the box. So at least for a start, I said, okay, let's disable them um, and compile everything else with it. Um, um, and yeah, then the next problem you run into is that uh, if you combine code with address sanitizer and without address sanitizer, you get some problems. It is no problem to have an application that you compile with address sanitizer and a library that's not compiled with address sanitizer. But the other way around, that doesn't work. So if you think, okay, I will start compiling my OpenSSL with address sanitizer, then immediately all the tools that are linked against OpenSSL won't work anymore. So for one, this means, okay, we have excluded GCC. That means we also have to exclude all the dependencies from GCC. Um, and it also means if you want to recompile everything, we have to consider in which order we do this so things don't break and we're still able to use the system. Um, then, uh, which is kind of obvious, the, it's the point of address sanitizer that when you're accessing some invalid memory that your application crashes and throws an error. So if you have an application that just does this in its normal operation, which is quite common, um, <laughs> yeah, then you have a problem. So you have to fix these bugs first. And um, I reported a lot of these bugs. Um, I've listed some tools here which are kind of core features of most Linux distributions. So Bash was crashing all the time when you tried to do tab completion. <laughs> <laughs> then I had a bug in Shred, which was interesting because it, it was at random. So Shred has a feature that it generates some random pattern in memory. And uh, this is random. And it, in, in one fourth of the cases, it would access invalid memory. Um, yeah, MandyB had a user after free bug, and yeah, all kinds of these things. So these need to be fixed in order to be able to use the code with address sanitizer in your code. But it's a good thing we fix bugs. Um, then, this is something which is difficult. <laughs> uh, sometimes you see code where the code documents that the code is wrong. Um, or you have people who say, okay, this cannot be, my code is correct, it must be a bug in address sanitizer. Um, i show you an example. This is a code from Subversion, the current release. So um, it has an if def, uh, no uninitialized access. So uh, the correct code is optional. <laughs> um, so yeah, it says, yeah, this married allocated by uninitialized bytes beyond the terminate email, uh, which is wrong. The bytes are actually not allocated. Um, I had some discussions with the developers, and in the end, they fixed it. So <laughs> turned out good. Um, 
this example is uh, Lua JIT. Um, it actually says two things that indicate that the code is wrong. One, it says that it's uh, unaligned axis, which is also not technically not allowed, but it's very common. Uh, and the next is here, it says access up to end of stream plus three. Um, where the discussion was a bit more difficult. I mean, you probably know this with free software developers. Most of them are nice and some are difficult. Um, yeah, so I don't think they intend to fix it. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, this kind of code is not correct. So you cannot just read some memory and expect that you can do this. It, it might very well be that you're not allowed to access this memory, or it might very well be that your compiler decides to do, uh, like to say, okay, this is accessing invalid memory, so I can ignore this, this state because it's invalid, so I can optimize it out. Um, and it's actually very rare that address sanitizer has bugs, so I haven't found any. So if someone says it's, it must be a bug in address sanitizer, I'm very skeptical. Um, and there may be false positives, but it's really rare. Um, yeah, then I had all kinds of compile issues. Uh, one of them was uh, that libtool, when you link a shared library with libtool, it filters the linker flags. And it says, OK, I will only allow linker flags that I know that are good. Um, and this ends up breaking a build with address sanitizer because the like, address sanitizer needs to link against the lib ASAN and thereby if you strip the address sanitizer flag from the linking step, then the linking fails. Um, this has now been fixed, there's no release yet, uh, but the kind of tricky thing is that libtool is it's not that you're using the libtool that's installed on your system, but the libtool scripts are bundled with packages. So in order to deploy this fix, it will take some time because they basically have to get the libtool update on the computers of the developers of the affected applications. Um, and uh, this was so common that what I actually did was that I added a, a function hook to Portage that looks for these scripts and patches them on all packages. Um, yeah. Um, then this was kind of tricky to debug actually what was going on so with libpthread. Uh, the problem here is that the address sanitizer library is providing some pthread functions because it's hooking them to, to whatever, to record what memories exist, but not all of them. So what happens is that if a configure script checks if pthread create exists, it says, okay, this function exists, I don't need to link the library in because it's already available. Uh, but then the compilation breaks because the other functions are not available. Um, yeah, I, I'm still not really sure what the best solution for this is. If anyone has a smart idea, uh, I had this problem was present in SQLite and I sent a patch to check for another function, but then a few days later someone complained that this would break on FreeBSD. I don't know why. Um, Okay, thanks. I should go faster. Um, uh, yeah, then uh, a tricky issue was with Perl. They are using LD preload to load the already built lib Perl and then run a mini Perl to run their own compiled script. Um, and if you preload an address sanitizer library and then try to execute GCC, which is not compiled with address sanitizer, it's like false. Um, there also, if anyone has a good idea how to fix this in a way that Perl would accept the patch, I would be happy because it's really tricky and I don't have a good idea how to fix it. Um, yeah, then, um, okay, so we can have a system that's compiled with address sanitizer. You will expect, you have to expect a lot of breakage and you have to be prepared to fix bugs, but actually, why is this useful? So, okay, we find bugs, that's useful, of course. We get software with less bugs. Uh, but then <coughs> you might ask, okay, is this really something I want to run like on a server where I say, okay, I want to have a very high security guarantee. And it's not entirely clear if this is a good idea to me. Um, so 
there's currently the Tor project also playing with this. They want to have a Tor hardened browser with address sanitizer enabled. Um, so there are already other people who are trying to use this in production code. Um, but address sanitizer was originally mostly designed as a debugging tool, so it's not necessarily the best to prevent exploitation. So uh, it prevents some bugs from being exploited, but if you have a, what, what you can call a linear buffer overflow, so if you have a buffer overflow that's starting inside your existing buffer, but goes beyond the bounds, then these bugs are reliably caught by address sanitizer. But if you have a buffer overflow where you can kind of jump out of your buffer, this may still be exploitable. And also, uh, use after free errors uh, are found by address sanitizer, but uh, you may still be able to exploit them anyway. Um, there's a blog post from Chris Evans where he's uh, explaining in much detail how good address sanitizer might be as an exploit mitigation tool. And then it might be that address sanitizer itself has bugs that lead to exploitation, so you might introduce other security issues. Um, yeah, and uh, so, but I still think this is a useful project because maybe even if this is mostly useful as a debugging <coughs> tool, maybe in the future we'll, we'll have something like address sanitizer that's much better, that maybe has hardware support maybe has reasonable performance that we can use. And if we want to even think about this, we have to fix these bugs where standard applications are accessing invalid memory. Um, and I mean, the other thing that exists is various exploit mitigation techniques. Um, I find it very unfortunate that ASLR is still pretty much not enabled on common Linux distributions. Um, there's some interesting work on new exploit mitigation techniques. Uh, uh, LLVM has no uh, code flow integrity and safe stack features, which, um, yeah, uh, probably if right now you want to use something for production, these things are probably more interesting. Um, yeah. And then I have some more slides if I have enough time, but I probably don't. One minute, yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, address sanitizer has a logging feature, which is nice if you have an application that disables your standard output and standard error because in, then you cannot see the error message. So it's very useful. Um, there are more sanitizer features in the compilers. Uh, undefined behavior sanitizer, which is mostly shifts and unsigned integer overflows. Uh, thread sanitizer and msun, which is for uninitialized memory access. Um, yeah, and this is an example for a bug I found like a week ago or something. This was the libbsd bug where I showed the stack trace earlier. Uh, actually, what's happening here is that the bigger must be a bigger or equal because uh, it's checking if we're still in the buffer. And if the size is, is the index, then we're already out of the buffer. So very typical off by one bug. <coughs> Yeah. I think you have questions. Raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Uh, I would like to ask uh, what you said uh, for you to present uh, the presentation of the website uh, and the to the uh, compile also the production. It is possible to compile the production of the but it is mostly independent. Yeah, so uh, it's possible. Okay. Um, but the problem is that it, it, it only locks the errors and doesn't crash on them. So you would want to, uh, but you could probably catch that. So how useful was the James system then after all if you couldn't run curl? Yeah. Uh, I, I could run curl, but I had to have a hacking workaround. 
could you actually use it to say browse the web? Send uh, and pull. Browse the web? No, I, I haven't tried with the browsers so much. But I have run it in the song. So I can sell my pages. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also wondering whether there's, uh, say, a second level episode with, like, um, you know, complex software tends to have their own allocators. Yeah, I suppose uh, yes, that's that a, if, if they have their own allocators, you have to disable them. So, <laughs> so essentially, so, yeah. it's pretty hard to know and just kind of copy something. Um, I mean, this was developed by the Chromium developers, basically, and they have an option to disable their whatever TCR or whatever it's called. So most of these, like, in terms of Firefox, you can also compile this address sanitizer. So it's not even straightforward, but it's used. So usually what they do is they just give it a more allocation. So, from what I've seen, <coughs> the address sanitizers, sanitizer, uh, look similar to Falcrail in terms of uh, memory usage information. So, um, in which way so does it help you more than Falcrail? So it's much faster and it finds stack overflows. Falcrail cannot find stack overflows by definition because the stack is just a uh, bunch of memory in the binary it doesn't have any information to find stack overflows. Thanks. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I have a question about the idea that takes a lot of the P3 trade or the use of the local side. Can you use both uh, the link P3 to, to be linked into the memory address? Can you choose the state of force that the best rate is Yeah, I can do that, but that's kind of a ugly workaround. So I want things to just work if you enable it. More questions? Two minutes. Uh, my question is, uh, most of the time I, I would just use uh, defense to, to see where my program would uh, like write in a worried or a way I'm not supposed to go to. Uh, so, and most of the time it's, uh, it's efficient enough to, to find the bugs. Uh, why would I want to, to use an address sanitizer? The production mode, can I just, can't I just use this or whatever according to the risk in a program mode in developing mode and when I'm, I'm good to go in production mode uh, doesn't matter. So, I'm not familiar with know the name and Something similar, but maybe unique. But what was your question? Like, okay, you question is without in production. Yeah. Or, or, is there a reason why I would want to use it in production? Yeah. If there's a bug you know you know about, then it might prevent exploitation of that bug. Yes. Yeah. So you, you increase the risk for denial of service, but you lower the risk for owning your machine. <laughs> and of course, there is one. Thank you, Alan.